Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Um, with hearing what the governor presented on the modeling, I also want to thank the brilliant people inside and outside of state government who've worked together to pull together that modeling work that's informing so much of our response. We hope that you can use that message to encourage, to be motivated, to continue to follow the stay-at-home orders because it is making a difference and only you continuing will allow us to have the outcomes that we're striving for. As was posted on the data dashboard on the Rhode Island Department of Health's website, we have a number of additional cases to report today, as well as unfortunate fatalities. Our total number of fatalities was previously 87. There are 18 additional fatalities that we are confirming today, so that we now have a total of 105. Seven people were in their 70s, seven people were in their 80s, four people were in their 90s, and all 18 of these people lived in our congregate care settings, such as nursing homes. It's important to note that nine of these 18 fatalities occurred yesterday. And so that number is consistent with the types of numbers we've been reporting each day. The other nine fatalities occurred during the days leading up to yesterday. There are some reasons for that that contribute to the times that we can sometimes have lags in death reporting, particularly in these congregate settings where there are a lot of challenges that are going on and there is assistance needed in being able to um, report out. Some of what can occur too is the time needed for test results. For example, if a specimen for testing is collected from someone and then they unfortunately pass away, it can take a few days for that test result to get turned around and then reassociated with that particular death as being a COVID-19 associated death. In Rhode Island, we are working with all facilities in our congregate care settings to make the lag time as short as possible. But it's important to understand that there will be some days where we have some of these cases that take time to get confirmed and added to our overall case count. Tomorrow, I'm also going to discuss the comprehensive range of efforts that we are putting in place to support nursing homes. In advance of that, I want to highlight one of those approaches today. We have designated Oak Hill Center in Pawtucket as a COVID-19 specialty nursing home. Oak Hill Center is now a central facility to accept patients who are being discharged from the hospital and who are COVID-19 positive, but who no longer require the acute level care of a hospital setting. This strategy allows COVID-19 positive patients leaving the hospital to receive specialized rehabilitation and step down post-acute care. That's after leaving the hospital where they can continue to receive the care that they need while allowing us to reserve hospital beds for patients who need that higher level acuity care. That's an important component, particularly given the modeling data that the governor showed and our continual message about making sure we can preserve the healthcare system to be able to withstand the capacity and maintain the capacity they will need to have to withstand the surge that we are um, uh, facing. What's important to know is our approach. Residents at other nursing homes who have COVID-19 will continue to remain at their current nursing homes. 
our designation of Oak Hill Center as a COVID-19 specialty nursing home is for patients who are leaving the hospitals going forward and being able to have a, spa a specialized location for them to continue to receive the care they need. Any resident in a nursing home now will continue to remain where they are and um, be separate from other residents who may have COVID-19. Particularly for the current residents at Oak Hill Center who do not have COVID-19 symptoms, they will be located in a separate, a completely separate unit at Oak Hill Center with their own staff who are able to continue to care for them. They will not have contact with any of the residents who have COVID-19. That's been the case, and that will continue to be the case going forward, even with Oak Hill designated as a COVID-19 specialty nursing home. Oak Hill will have an enhanced level of support and staffing to meet the complex needs of their residents, particularly with this designation. And we will make sure that they have all of the PPE that they need to be able to carry that out. Staff caring for residents with COVID-19 will not be in contact with residents in the unit um, where they, in the other units where there are residents without COVID-19. And staff working at Oak Hill will not be working at other facilities as well. And of course, all residents will continue to be very closely monitored for any COVID-19 symptoms and continue to achieve and aim for and be supported in implementing very aggressive infection control measures that will remain in place. We are grateful to the staff as well as the administrators at Oak Hill for partnership and for their work in getting this arrangement in place. In addition to people who live in congregate care settings, another major focus for us is people in communities where we have traditionally seen health disparities. We are still working to get increasingly granular with our data, get more and more details with our data so that we can understand our uh, landscape in terms of addressing those disparities. Our preliminary numbers indicate that roughly 45% of our COVID-19 cases in Rhode Island are among Latino Rhode Islanders. That means they are significantly overrepresented in our group of people who have tested positive. We're working extremely hard to get testing sites set up in sites that are more accessible and in our core cities throughout Rhode Island. We're also working with our health equity zone partners. Throughout the state, our health equity zones are committed to ensuring that everyone, regardless of their zip code, gets access to the services and the supports they need in good times and in bad times. It's a ready-made infrastructure that's community-led, looking to reflect the needs of the communities to improve the living conditions, all of which we know contribute to why we are seeing higher rates of COVID-19 in some of our racial and ethnic population groups. Health equity zones and other community leaders have been in touch with us on a daily basis. They are our boots on the ground, talking to residents, raising awareness on issues that are particular to them, and making sure that from Woonsocket to Westerly, concerns and voices of members of their communities are heard. Thank you to our health equity zones and to all of our community and nonprofit partners. You are doing amazing work. We appreciate your partnership and we need you to continue with us in supporting communities in need right now.